Hi, good morning, everybody. Today is uh, September 13, 2021, week 10 of our class, the last day. Uh, today is the final exam, as I told you before. <clears throat> uh, hope uh, everyone is doing good. I have received your midterm and the other responses. Some of you haven't done. Uh, haven't completed all of them. Anyhow, uh, let's see at the end what's going to happen. So today, <clears throat> uh, being the last day, I'm going to review a uh, little bit of review of what we did for the last 10 weeks, actually nine weeks, one week we had uh, Labor Day holiday. So um, <clears throat> This was the, uh, we were talking about the Buddhist scriptures and we defined what scriptures are. In any given religion, scriptures are sacred texts. So in Buddhism, we were discussing about the various uh, types of uh, scriptures in different languages also. You learned about the Pali Canon, how the canon was built and how it is uh, how it is passed through the ages <clears throat> and then uh, preservation and all, all kinds of things. Uh, that's just the Pali canon. And how about the Chinese and Tibetan canons? Uh, they have similar things. What, whatever you find in the Pali canon, you find the parallel in Chinese uh, it's called Agama, Chinese canon. In Chinese Agama also you find the parallels of uh, Pali, uh, Pali canon. So basically the translation, translation from Pali into Chinese. And there are some more additions also. And in the Tibetan tradition, we were talking about the Tanjur and Kanjur, two types of uh, genre of texts many, many, many texts. And you again, you find parallels uh, of the Pali Canon as well as many more uh, later editions. Basically all these three uh, considered to be the primary sources of Buddhism as well as it's, in other terms, we call them Buddhist scriptures. Other than this, there are many other uh, text written by uh, eminent and prominent uh, Buddhist uh, leaders. Like one of the best examples is uh, Visuddhi Mag, Path of Purification, written in the fourth, fifth century in Sri Lanka by uh, Venerable Buddha Gosa. Buddha Gosa wrote that book and it is, it is like a compendium of all Theravada teachings. So anybody who is willing to learn about Buddhism, that is one of the, it is considered as a scripture because it contains all the important Buddhist teachings in a summary form in that uh, very famous book. It's a big thick book. Uh, so it is also a scripture. Likewise, in Chinese uh, tradition and in Tibetan tradition also, you have uh, many uh, texts considered to be Buddhist scriptures. So this, uh, these Buddhist scriptures uh, are the only uh, reliable and uh, trustworthy source for us to learn about Buddhism. Uh, for instance, uh, when we were talking about the historical Buddha, if you want to learn, if you want to do a research on the historical Buddha, you have to go to these texts. You have to, uh, uh, you have to uh, use these texts to uh, get uh, whatever the details in there. 
So Buddha's life story, Gautama Buddha's life story <clears throat> is uh, written in these texts, not the whole biography of the Buddha, but in different places you find certain incidents. Uh, so when you, when you put those things together, little pieces together, you can get the big picture, complete picture. That is how Buddha's life story, biography, is uh, created, is uh, discovered actually. So in the text, in the Buddhist scriptures, you find, uh, I'm just giving you the first example, Buddha's life story is right there in different places of the text. Likewise, uh, the many teachings that we were looking at, like the Four Noble Truths, Eightfold Path, Nirvana, Karma, you name it. All those main Buddhist uh, tenets, Buddhist teachings, you find in these texts. As, as well as the, uh, the rules for the monastic community. Uh, uh, we were discussing about the, this thing before. Uh, there are some rules and regulations for the uh, for the upkeep of the uh, Buddhist monastics, monks and nuns. Monks as well as nuns, there are different sets of rules and regulations. Why rules and regulations? Because in order to maintain the tradition pure, in order to maintain the tradition, the monastic Sangha intact. Otherwise, if you do not have rules, uh, there's no control. <laughs> that is why we have rules everywhere. Even in, in, in here, we have traffic rules because if there are no traffic rules, anybody can do anything. <laughs> you don't have to follow the rules. You just uh, <laughs> do whatever you like. So in the same way, in the Buddhist Sangha, Buddhist tradition, even uh, Chinese, Tibetan, any, any given Buddhist tradition, you have a certain set of uh, rules. Uh, that Those rules are mentioned in the Buddhist scriptures. So whenever you want to maintain the pure, pure Sangha, pure community of monks and nuns, you have to go back to your Vinaya rules and it is called Vinaya, disciplinary rules. And then only you can, uh, you can be pure, you can be pristine, you can be uh, a good intact community. So in the same way that the, the, the first one is, we saw it in our lectures, Sutra, the discourses, and the second one is Vinaya. Vinaya is the uh, disciplinary rules and regulations. Third one is the Abhidham, Abhidharma. Abhidharma is the uh, uh, elaboration of the uh, texts earlier text elaborate the, the, the extra, extra explanations for the uh, discourses. Discourses, you find the general language, like day-to-day, uh, -day, because the Buddha had conversations with many different people. When you have a conversation, it's the day-to-day -day language. Usually, even if we talk each other, we communicate each other, we use different uh, analogies, similes, and you know, uh, languages so simple. But when you are talking about some serious matters like nirvana, like karma, like four noble truths, uh, there should be some stereotype language. Stereotype means. Uh, some good, like, like, you know, it's very easy to understand when you talk about science. In science, we use specific terms for specific things. But in day-to-day -day language, we do not use those languages. For example, to identify a tree, we call apple tree. But in scientific terms, they don't call it apple tree. They call something else. I don't know what they call it, but they, they have a special name scientific name. 
when you use that scientific name, it is only for the apple tree. <laughs> in the same way, in Buddhism also, in Abhidharma, what they are doing is they are identifying things with, with specific terms and specific language. So it's, nobody can uh, nobody can say that's no not that one. This one Buddha meant when he was talking about the four noble truths, he meant this thing, something like that. So it is specific uh, language. Uh, that is why uh, Abhidharma is so important. Uh, you find if you want to find if you want to clarify certain things uh, in the discourses. Uh, it is there in the Abhidharma. It's explained in very, uh, I would say, very dry language, hard to understand. But day-to-day -day language is easy. Buddha was communicating with people with day-to-day -day language. Uh, but in Abhidharma, it is a kind of philosophy, philosophical interpretations of the early discourses. So these three genres, these three uh, sort of uh, uh, strands, lines are there in the Buddhist scriptures. And also later editions and many things. So in Mah if you go to Mahayana tradition, Mahayana sutras, there are over 600 sutras, 600, over 600 sutras collected as Mahayana uh, literature, Mahayana scriptures. So all these contain the basic Buddhist teachings as well as their developments. Basic Buddhist mm, teachings over the ages, as time goes by, as time went by, uh, things were changing and they added certain things depending on the uh, time, uh, explaining the same thing in different terms or uh, the way they understood it. So these are called Buddhist texts in different traditions. In Mahayana tradition, Theravada tradition, Tibetan, uh, Tibetan uh, Tantric tradition or Vajrayana tradition. And in Mongolia, you have the Mongolian uh, tradition, uh, mostly Tibetan way of uh, understanding Buddhism. So all in, in this class, what we were looking at is, uh, we were trying to uh, understand what Buddhist scriptures were, what Buddhist scriptures are actually, and uh, how to uh, get information from them. What sort of, uh, what sort of uh, information that we can derive from these sources these texts, basic Buddhist teachings. Uh, we did not have enough time to go into depth, into detail, but we were looking at the basic primary Buddhist teachings like Nirvana, Four Noble Truths, uh, Karma, and all those things. Uh, so Buddhist scriptures are the repository, I would say. Repository is the storage. So in the scriptures, everything is there. You have to go to a specific place and take it out. Just like from a, from a computer, you have to go to the correct file and uh, get the information. In the same way in Buddhism, Buddhist scriptures actually, you find many uh, Buddhist teachings, practices, like we were talking about the meditation, so how meditation, how it was invented and how it uh, was developed in the, in the tradition, not just in Pali Theravada tradition, but in other traditions too, like in China, they have different types of, they introduce different types of meditations. In Japan, very famous thing, Zen Buddhism, huh? Zen meditation, Zen practices. Likewise, in Tibetan tradition also, you have a specific different uh, types of meditation. So this is, uh, all those practices, all those uh, rituals, 
all those Buddhist teachings are in the in this storage of Buddhist scriptures. Now you should be able to understand uh, the value of the uh, Buddhist scriptures. It is uh, without these scriptures, you cannot talk about Buddhism because the earliest strata of Buddhism, you cannot see if you do not have the texts. If you do not have the scriptures, you do not know, we do not know what happened during the time of the Buddha and what kind of teachings that he offered to the world, right? So the scriptures help, uh, it'll help us in many different ways to recreate the uh, to recreate the original setting and at the same time scriptures show us how buddhist teachings were developed over the ages how things were explained at the time of the buddha and in later years later centuries uh, later buddhists how they uh, interpreted them, how they understood them, and how they presented those things to the uh, world. Over the uh, at least about uh, two, 20 centuries, 20 centuries, around 20 centuries, 2000 years, uh, the scriptures have been there and they have been providing the guidance for the Buddhists to learn Buddhism, to practice Buddhism, to do research on Buddhism. That is why we were talking about the Buddhist scriptures. <clears throat> so the review uh, wise, that is all that I have to tell you. Uh, so you have the, you will get the final exam, uh, only one, one essay question. Uh, there'll be one essay question. So please uh, understand the question first and then write your answers. It has to be uh, more than, more than uh, 300 words at least. You can write as many as possible, but over 300 words at least. And uh, as I have been telling you every time that in your answer sheet, please mention your name. Otherwise I cannot recognize you over through the email. Some of you I can recognize, but some of you I do not know who you are. Please, please, in the, in the answer sheet, write your name and then I can grade you. Otherwise I'm at a loss. So thank you very much for uh, taking this class and I hope uh, I, uh, we were doing great. Some of you have been doing great uh, and uh, hope to see you again in the future. If you have any questions, please uh, do let me know and uh, final exam is only for this week. That means you can submit your answers up until Friday. So the coming Friday, the, today is Monday, right? So the fri Friday is the last day to submit your papers. After that, you will not get grades. Uh, Friday is the last day. So please uh, do take a note of it and submit your answers as you have been doing and mention your name in the answer sheet so you can get the grades. Thank you very much again. <clears throat> Hope to see you in the future class, in any future class. I don't know what class. Uh, so be healthy. <laughs> Thank you so much.